I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's the guy that says if the weather's clear, I'm can do time, cause can I'm do. In line. This the guy, guy says the horse can do tonight. But look at that horse, he wins it by a half. This according to this here's and telegraph. For Paul Big Revere, I'll bite a hair, his foot's all right. Of course, course it all depends if it rained last night. I know it's mud. Likes mud. This X means the horse likes mud. And just to make it, boys, needs me. Fox noise is as the great friend of all the words. Echo poison. I tell you, Paul Revere, now this is no bum steer. It's from my hands, it can't. For that's real sincere. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. During the next presentation, may I request your absolute silence? For I have a message of great importance for everyone in the audience. Now remember, please. Absolute quiet. In a day at the races, the horses aren't the only ones racing. There's also the human race. Either he's dead or my watch is stopped. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the management of this theater, I want to announce the next attraction. The unfinished love story. I refer to Saratoga. In a day at the races, there is competition amongst owners, trainers, jockeys, employees, bettors, fans, and all the characters at the track. his spot and that's his style at the back of the pack
God bless. I'm Mark Anthony DeBello, your host, and welcome to a day at the races. I'm here at the Amtrak station in Rensselaer, New York. In the days of old, from the beginning of the presidency of Abraham Lincoln, when Saratoga Race Truck Course was first established, the oldest racetrack in the country, the oldest sporting venue in the country, men of all levels of wealth, from the penthouse to the poor, came via train to enjoy their day at the races. So this isn't officially yet, you know, we're not at the track, but there is a track here. So God bless us and welcome to a day at the races. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the characters and horses for today's feature race. The characters and horses are in the starting gate. They're off. The races that we're on today, um, I'd have to say, you know, and races can be goals. I would say, first is Seth getting us there safely. So, <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> Seth stole the car. So, <laughs> actually, Seth is a good, actually Seth is a good man. Seth, how long were you in? I say jail, but you were in where? I was in um, Groveland uh, Correctional Facility. I was in prison for 20 months. I'm giving my brother Seth this personal Bible. He might have one, but I'm going to give it to him anyway. So, uh, you're welcome. For his participation in starting out our journey. There's people racing. Where are they going? They're racing. Maybe it's the two of the escaped Danamora. <laughs> <laughs> They're still on the loose. Dan Moore, I have a cousin who works up there. It's north of here, Saratoga. And they caught one, one they shot, and one they caught walking down the road trying to walk to Canada. Uh, and But I, they were up here in Dan Moore prison, and they were on a race, their own race. And they both lost, God bless them. Tonight, uh, there's a concert up at SPAC. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, my favorite, next to Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, who I used to do a yeah, 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 invitation show of Aerosmith and Steven Tyler. Walk this way, okay, would be, you know, and I'm not a girly teenager, but, you know, his music really speaks to me. And with his band, I've seen him a few times and had a, a wonderful occasion to meet him after a concert once. He has a couple dogs, and his wife Marisol was out in the back you know, in the parking lot where the bus was and a few fans and I were gathered there and got to meet Rob Thomas. Uh, Rob just, his music is just amazing to me and he's appearing solo tonight with Counting Crows at SPAC. So we're gonna try to go over, I'm gonna try to go over uh, either way and, and try to meet with Rob Thomas or at least hear his music because that girl at the, to, took a photograph of Rob and I never sent it to me. And uh, for two years I've been trying uh, I actually got arrested outside a Matchbox 20 concert a couple years after that because they thought I was scalping tickets, which there's no way in hell I'm going to give up a Matchbox 20 ticket. And I ended up spending the you know half a day or half an evening in the you know in jail facility. I'm standing there next to the concert, and four guys, squirrely looking guys, come up to me and say, "You want you got any tickets to the concert?" I said, "Yeah, two." but my date didn't show up. They're like, can we buy one? I go, yeah, I guess I'll sell you one. And they're like, how much? I go, I don't know. I don't remember what I paid. Maybe 90 bucks, because I think that's what the ticket costs. And that's all I said. Next thing you know, they're throwing handcuffs on me. I'm like, for what? They go, you're trying to scalp tickets. I go, what the hell are you talking about? I'm depressed I didn't get a girlfriend for the darn concert. I'm not trying to scalp tickets. It's, it was actually Matchbox and Goo Goo Dolls, I think, which two are my favorites. 
and, and I'm like, I'm not scalping tickets. Why the hell would I do that? And it's right in front of the ticket thing and right in front of the gate to go in. And the, and the four of these guys, they had nothing better to do. I could tell they looked squirrely anyway. They looked, they had stuff going on, and I'm like, you, you know, four of them together. They didn't look like they were going to a concert. So I'm like, I, and I'll be totally honest with you, the same thing I told them. I did a show once on people who were angry, and they invited you in, and they tried to tick you off into the room, and what I knew that I don't know anybody else knew was they were hidden cameras all over the room. So they wanted to catch your reaction. So I thought this was a hidden camera thing when the guy was asking me this. Cause I'm like, I know he's trying to bait me into something. Whatever he's trying to bait me into, I'm not doing anything wrong. So I said, well, I'll kind of play along with it a little bit. So I said, yeah, I got two tickets, but I'm not selling you one for more than face value. Cause that'd be scalping. And the guy got all dejected. He was like, oh geez, I can't entrap him. So I was like, all right, guy, you know, I told you, I got, why did you buy two tickets, he says. I said, because I was hoping to bring a date at some point, and Lord knows I've been on enough dating shows, I thought I could get one. Mark says that he's quite spiritual and that he has some very special talents. He says he can communicate with, and stay with me on this, animals and angels. So, again, I waited in front. I didn't want to be the first one in the show. I try to always be, you know, go last. And I said, well, maybe I can just give the ticket to somebody, or if I can get my money back at least, or a portion or half of it, I'll be fine. And that was all. Next thing I know, these four guys are like, I could see them all working together. One's on the left side saying, you sure you don't want to sell it for more? And the other guy's on the right side saying, listen, 91 is just one more. You can still make a dollar if you sell it for 91. I'm like, no, 90 face value, whatever it is, or how about half? Half? Are you crazy? You're gonna lose money on the deal. If you came here to sell tickets, you know, you'd lose money if you were a scalper. I'm like, but I'm not a scalper. So the guy's like, well, we've had about enough of this. We're pretty frustrated. We're gonna arrest you anyway. And that's the God's honest truth. And I spent the whole time bawling my eyes out. I'm like, why are you arresting me? I, I waited two years to come back and see this. And I tried to tell them the photo story and they don't want to hear that. No. So I'm like, listen, they go, they go, you're a ticket scout. I go, here's my business card. I go, I'm not a ticket scout. Oh, you work for a ticket agency. I'm like, I'm what? what? Mud on. Anyway, long story short, now we're heading back up the North Way, which is one of the ways most people go here. And I'm heading up. And again, so if you ask me my goals, <laughs> I guess that would be my number one goal is, is to, you know, be blessed with Rob Thomas and say hi to, to him again. And, uh, and, and I mean, that would be a race that I would, this, you know, two year race, okay? That would be a race that I finally win. Listen, right from the horse's mouth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well said, Seth. Well said, Seth. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're heading up now to the track. There's two main foodie places at the track, or outside the track. One is Stewart, where we are now, all right? And the other is across the street over there. So if it's not Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts or Stewart's at the track, you don't eat. Because racetrack food, we try to encourage people to lay off the chicken. Too many chickens getting killed up there at the track, okay? <laughs> Horses and chickens like each other. When you see a horse at his barn, they usually have an animal with them because it calms them down. They're social creatures, either a bird or a goat, a lot of times doggies, kitties, you know, and even chickens. So we don't want to, you know, we don't want to be eating the chickens because it depresses the horsey. And loading up on some How you doing? <laughs> that bears to be a saying. And loading up on some protein. This is yeah. How much? Oh, that's too bad. Freeze my favorite flavor. <laughs> my name comes from Mars or Mark, the uh, warrior, red warrior. The planet Mars is red. And everything I read said that red is supposed to be my signature color. It's also the color of anger. And, you know, sometimes I've had anger issues. But I've never, ever, ever been angry at a horse. They can bite me. Here's come as well. Oh, beautiful. Look at him. You're so beautiful. Hello, beautiful. I'm glad you won. Ben took a couple good nips out of me. <laughs> and I never ever could get mad at that beautiful horsey. Oh, I would I would lay down my life for if a horsey's running across the road and he's gonna get hit by a car, I'm running in front of that car and I'm saving that horsey, no doubt about it. I, I know they have now horse programs. Did they have anything like that? Did you hear of anything like that where you were set like they have a horse program? like for the inmates I saw one recently on TV where you can you know like 
they'd furlough you out or something, or if you had good, you know, points or marriage, you were allowed to do the horse program, and you could maintain the horse and groom the horse, and also ride the horse, and it just taught you how about, you know, responsibility and, you know, having a compassionate side and, and healing whatever, you know, addictions or anger people had or whatever problems. Yeah, I'm not sure if they did have that program. Well, you were in, you were obviously in, in executive farm camp prison. <laughs> <laughs> Correctional Institute, where they send the white collar criminals. There's a couple of the guys in their horse race. And they're off. And they're off. What would you say is your number one goal today, Seth Brooks? Uh, your number one race. I gotta, uh, I gotta charge my GPS for an hour. For your car? No, for uh, for myself. It's one of the privileges of uh, getting out of prison, and that uh, they put me with that. I gotta charge it for an hour two times a day, uh, eight in the morning to eight to nine in the morning and eight to nine at, at night. So it does the battery doesn't go dead, so they think you're right. escaped or something. Right. So they know where I'm at. So they know where you're at. How do you charge it? Uh, there's a cord that I plug into here and I plug it into the outlet. Yeah. I mean, you can't do it in a car, can you? No. So yeah. anywhere where there's an outlet where I can plug it in. And you got to just sit there for the hour while it's charging. Yep. So as I'm charging my GPS, it uh, gives me the, an hour, gives me the time to uh, get into my Bible and get, uh, get close with God and, and get my day started off right. Would you call that a race, Seth? To, or do you feel like it'll be a race for you to get to an outlet, especially if you're enjoying the horses? Uh, that it is, you know, to make sure that I'm charged at the proper time so this way I'm following all my uh, procedures that uh, pros are uh, asking for me and for me to do. So this way I can make sure I stay here and enjoy my freedom. We're waiting, they're gonna cut. When I shake the candy, they'll be out. When I shake the peppermints, we'll get your Mini Coopers. I open my day at the races by coming to visit my little friends. And here come the Mini Coopers, here they are. Look at these guys, they either stayed in the dryer too long and got shrunk, or you need a real tiny jockey for these guys. These are my friends, the Mini Coopers. Hello, beautiful. Remember, any day you want to start at the races, you always want to start it with the horsey because we're all about glorifying the horse. They don't always have to race. Look at this guy. He wants a little something. So, yes, I'm coming. You, are you flossing with the wire? Here, you don't need that. That's like braces for you, isn't it? Here, take off your braces. I got a little treat for you. Look at that. Yes, I do. A little treat for you. Yes, hello, other Mini Cooper. It's three Mini Coopers out here. Look, at. hold on. I'm not going to forget you. I mean, look it, you can come here as a wealthy owner and pay a million dollars for a horse. You can be an employee or a vendor who's in competition that we're going to check out shortly. Or you can just be a fan or a family here just to bet and enjoy the day at the races. But either way, it's all about the beautiful horse. And that's the reason we really celebrate a beautiful day here at the races. Oh, you yeah, it's my first, uh, first time on the track. But, uh, I just never had the time to get out here. So when you have a day at the races, it's your actual... Day at the race. <laughs> your first day ever at the races. Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm going to enjoy it to the fullest. If I do decide, because I came to host the day at the races today by train, if I do decide to get back, I'd like to know when I need to leave. This looks like the schedule that I brought in with me. Now, apparently, somehow, maybe like I would do with the, with the program at the track, um, I lost. So it doesn't have any hoof prints on it. It might have a sneaker print. Maybe it's an Under Armour. Kevin Plank, we know Mr. Plank comes to the... Uh, actually, I've seen Mr. Plank here before. He loves horses. I think he's the owner of Sagamore Farm. Uh, the founder of Under Armour. Started in a, selling t-shirts out of the trunk of his car. And now I think they're as big, if not bigger, than Nike. Shoes, apparel, I mean, health and fitness equipment. I mean, you name it. I mean, you see that Under Armour logo? I mean, you think top quality and, and class? When you pay your $5, they give you a coupon. All you gotta do is Thank go you. to either end of the track. You get it. Automatically. Thank you. Just tell me you want the coupon. Love of the dream? Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm with him. I know. <laughs> How do you know Seth? School. 
What's cool? Hard knocks? Try high. <laughs> Try not to hold it against you. <laughs> I'm joking. He's a good kid. You're a good judge of people. Yes, he is. He is a good kid. And you're going to enjoy. What are you looking to do here at your day at the races? I just want my towel. I was here yesterday betting. Okay, so you're coming to the races not to bet today. You, you got your betting out of your I'm system. I'm not a gambler, actually. Okay. I'm not a gambler. I just like the atmosphere, actually, to tell you the truth. I just like coming up here and seeing the horses, the people. Spending time with my family. So how will we know if you had a successful day at the end of the day with your day at the race? How will you know if you What's won or lost that race? Success, though? You don't have to win to be successful. Ice cold water. Two for one. Ice cold water. You can get two. Why only paying one dollar? Do you guys rehearse or do you just no. come out? You this is this act is just you sing together like this all the time? No. It's the first time they're doing it. The first time you're doing it? Yeah. You guys are great. You should be on America's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what a hand do you know what a, you're imitating do you, can you imitate a horse? We're at a racetrack. Can you imitate um, a horse? I can't. You did a you just did a gorilla. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Very it's cool. Terrible. And who? You, what kind of shirt is that you're wearing? The Under Armour shirt. Well, which is never back down. How do you know it's Under Armour? Because you're a Philly who knows fashion? Because it has the Under Armour sign on right here. Oh, I see. Only one. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ice cold. Hold on, wait a minute. You're in a race, you have a start and a finish line. Yeah. Show me your, tell me your start and show me your finish line. So we buy the water and then it goes to this floor because it's like, this is like, kind of, <laughs> like melted ice so it's like not as cold. Okay, but I thought Saratoga water, again, was famous for its Saratoga water. Yeah. Yours is not Saratoga, it's yours Poland is Poland. Poland, okay. Yeah. Does that come straight from Poland or did it come from Teaneck, New Jersey? Teaneck, New Jersey. Okay, right, so that's But it's the finest water. Yeah. And we have big wind water, so you can win big with big wind water. <laughs> yes! Okay. Beautiful, well said. Okay, so here's the start. Here, look at your, your race to make a sale is happening right now. That guy's buying five no, gallons of water. Oh, he's just buying one water. Okay, so she's making sure. Okay, so this was the start, and then this is your yeah. what? Thank and you. then this is like kind of like a uh, less cooler version of a cooler. And, okay. and so I just get in there, and then when she has enough room, like when she has 20 or less, then we put them in there, and then put more in to get. So I would say, so I would say your race is to empty this. Yeah. Yeah. Take this, which is full. Empty that. Yeah. Get all the ice out, so you don't have to carry it back home. And sell it. And sell it, and feed all the fans of the day at the races yes. with a with a, a nice cool drink of Saratoga water from Poland, and for you to get more greenbacks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let me contribute a dollar towards your day at the races, thank and you. thank you very much for your time. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Continued success. We're going to come check up on you after. Okay, sounds good. If thank you don't you. get the three hundred dollars, boom! Yeah. <laughs> if you get the three hundred dollars, we congratulate you. We give you a prize. I'm going to give you a, save that little cup trophy. Okay. I'm going to give you a trophy if you get the $300. I'm going to give you each a trophy. Okay. You know, we'll give you a trophy at for your day at the races. At six, we'll be at, oh, geez, I don't know. We've got to leave sooner. Okay. So let's say this. If you get to 200 by, can you get to 200 by 5 o'clock? Yes. yes. 200 by 5 o'clock, easy. Okay, if you get to 200, you win your day at the races, and I'll give you a prize. You'll win again. Okay? Yeah. I collect for events. And everybody uses my table because I got the only table. <laughs> if you contact Warhorse, they can explain their whole program. Interesting name, you hear that? Warhorse. Yeah, yeah. It's retired racehorses and so have a tent. Yeah, that yeah. work together. You know, for 150 years, the old money, the elite, the wealthiest people were always the horse owners, and they drove cars not unlike this. Talk about beautiful horsepower. Look at this machine. That's from the days of old. Now look at this modern marvel. Imagine the horsepower under this bad boy. Or it could be a girl. You know, guys like to name their cars after fillies as well. But listen, what do they all have in common? Horsepower. How many horsepower do you think there's in that? Uh, 300 and something. 300 and something horsepower in that. The Fusillo. 
Billy Fusillo, if you see the back of the license plate, huge, he's famous for saying huge, like Donald Trump says huge, and he owns racehorses. So he's got horsepower there, and he's got horsepower there, and we actually know Mr. Fusillo. So Seth, here you're standing in front of Honorable, trying not to step in the flowers like the other people do, Seth. Oh, okay. No, it's easier. <laughs> you found the one spot. Did they have an honor code in the military where you were? In the Marine Corps, yes, we did. Okay. We, did you? Uh, we, uh, our code was honor, courage, commitment, and uh, somewhere for the Dallas means always faithful. Your peace officer here, security. Have you shot anybody yet today? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Who have you shot? And how come, Robert? The shooting me. Thank you very much for your time. To that beautiful robber, peace officer, peace. This line is for the promotional giveaway at the track. So we're going to do a track shot, track. It's all about the track. It's a day in the race. It's a horse. He's got to go somewhere. They run a straight line. They'll run to California from here in New York. What team? I know this team is not even a U.S. team. This is, where's that team? Where? Do you know where Toronto is? What country? What country? It can, very good. And I know this team, because we're in this state. What, what's the state name that goes with your team right there? Do you know? Do you know, have you ever heard of the uh, Rhode Island Mets? Have you ever heard of the Pennsylvania Mets? How about the New York Mets? That's it, she got it. She's a winner. She knows people. If you, if you could be a horse yourself, what would you want your name to be? Luke the Duke. Luke the Duke. So does that mean your first name is Henry or Duke? Oh, Luke, okay, I almost stumped him. Now, what about you, Princess? What would your first name be? What would your horsey name be? Oh, get it close. I didn't hear what she said. Let's say it again. Ghost Go Sapper. Ghost Sapper? That was a real horse. Oh, she, uh, so is Luke the Duke. Oh, Luke the Duke's a real year. horse, yeah. too? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, and I'm supposed to be the host, you know. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about a day at the races? How about the princess first? Ladies first. What do you, you like the most the races? What do you like the most at the races? What's, your, what's the most fun day? Is it being with your brother and your dad? Is it watching ghost sappers? Is it scoring a beach towel? What's your favorite part of the race? Watching ghost sappers. Beautiful. How about you, Luke the Duke? What's your favorite thing of day at the races? Betting horses. <laughs> betting horses! I think they have a height limit when you go in for betting. Well, we bet, you have we, to we, be... Well, we bet Syndergaard the other day. And that picture, and it won. There's a horse named Cindergar? I thought you were the host. <laughs> I'm the goat, not the host. <laughs> We've got celebrities coming to the track. Look at this woman. Looks like a celebrity. Look, looks like Bo Derek. Remember Bo Derek from 10? I know Bo Derek. We got the regular guys who've been coming for years. How long do you come to the track? Just right now. Just right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. And this is Judith admissions. I know Judah's sister works right over there, Beth Admissions, and that's her brother Tom Admissions, the next booth down. <laughs> we got five dollars back. It's only five dollars a person. Just enter for a day at the races, that's all. Beautiful. You know what, Judith, I gotta tell you, I love all the Phillies at the track, but you are without a doubt the prettiest girl in that booth. <laughs> <laughs> See how she is? Three dollars. How much is the big one? Five dollars. Let me see. This yes. has no past performance. Right, show, open up the big one. Let me see what the past performances look like. Depends on which ones. You have maidens or not. Okay. I, I normally have a racing form because when you come to a day at the races, the racing form is your Bible. But I'm so far ahead, I already have tomorrow's racing form. <laughs> so that's you want to be a visionary when it comes to profiting in a day at the races. Now, there's New York rags. I don't know what they've got because I try to look in them and go against them. <laughs> but you have to have the, the daily Bible at the track, which is the daily racing form. Okay, did I pay you? Nope. I'm not the brightest bulb on Broadway. Sometimes <laughs> I already feel like I made three bucks. I didn't have to pay. Where are you going? Ask him. Uh, <laughs> 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 Let's get short-term memory issues. Uh, the Berkshire Family Day. Berkshire Family Day. You're right here. It's this tent way down the end. Mark Anthony DeBello back here, your host for a day at the races. You know what? We've got to check out this race right here because our featured owner, Mr. Steve Sigler of Winning Move Stables, he's got a horse in this first race. Dream Man. He's the morning line favorite. Let's go over here. I'm going to take a look at the odds board. Right? 
and see what his odds are. He's still nine to five. That's still the favorite. That's about two to one on your money. So we're gonna go over to see where we think we can find Mr. Sigler. We know where his booth is or his box. So we're gonna take a walk over there and we're gonna surely root for him because he's in a, you know, probably the most profound of all races here at the track other than our human race. And that's the actual horse he's running around the track. So post time's at one o'clock. So we've got only about five minutes to post. They're at the half. Outside with gray with the orange silks. Come on, four. Come on, four. Come on, four. Uh, not good. Third. Third. Not good. He's going to be disappointed. Uh, Seth Brooks here. First day of my race. We're at the races. Such a beautiful atmosphere. Beautiful, amazing people. And uh, strolling along here, trying to find. Uh, uh, what is that called again? Uh, I talked to Mr. Sigler earlier. He's yeah, up he's over in the box. He's got a horse in this race. Too. No, I know he does. Yeah, we yeah, talked earlier. We're going to. Yeah, we're, we're going to go interview him. But okay. you look great okay. today. Thanks. If you don't recall, remember we talked to you. I met you at the Aerosmith yes. concert. Of course I did. I said, so now we got to go back to our go to first guy around, Mr. Sigler. Now, I don't know how he is with Mr. Contessa because I know they were tight for a while. Then they had a short falling out. And now I think they're probably tight again because you're yeah. a very qualified trainer. Well, and, I hope you And yeah. Sigler and I are rock solid. With I know them. you are. He, I, I just meant the one yeah. time he, you weren't on one of his horses that I was watching yeah. that day. He does and have I'm like, other trainers. Don't have notes to go back on what she looked like in the paddock, uh, but obviously beaten um, by a nice stablemate of hers. But she just comes in here. She's very much forward into the bridle. A lot of owners. Um, they have many, many horses, and not all of them can be trained by just one trainer. They all have different running styles. Some are turf, some are distance, some are sprint. So with somebody like Mr. Sigler, who probably has, and he can answer for us later, maybe two dozen horses, you sometimes want different trainers, you know, depending on, you know, again, the type of class of horse. So as Mr. Contessa was saying, he's not Mr. Sigler's only trainer, um, but he is a fantastic trainer many, many years you know, won the um, Saratoga or the New York training title between Aqueduct and Belmont. Meeting, but I don't know, I just get the feeling that this one may need to start more overall. Yeah, 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 Mark Anthony DiBello, your host back here for a day at the races. You know, this track is like no other track in all the world, certainly not North America. At this track, in this area, right here, these famed clubhouse boxes where you can find the famous families of the Industrial Revolution of old or the Civil War days from the Battle of Saratoga. Names just synonymous with old money wealth. The Whitney's, the Vanderbilt's, the Mellon's, the Rockefeller's, the DuPont's, all right here. And now their generations, their offspring, also here. So you might see somebody like Hall of Fame head coach Bill Parcells. He often is here at the track. Or maybe somebody from the celebrity cooking world, like famed chef Bobby Flay, horse owner and horse lover. He's here. Whether you look to your left or you look to your right or you've got blinkers on like the horses will wear, you're, I'm sure you're going to find a celebrity here who also is loving and enjoying their day at the races. Don't you back that way, right? I'm sure when we meet with Mr. Sigler, he too is going to have to have a handicap that he overcomes to win this race, whether it's the other horses in the race, whether it's a personal race, because listen, in a day at the races, the horses aren't the only ones racing. There's also the human race. How are you doing? Good. Good, thank you. What's that, uh, what are we looking for? Okay. What are you looking for? I think it's uh, the family, family fun thing, whatever. So we're rooting for Shadow Rider to win this second race here at the track. Let's see the distance of this race. It's seven furlongs, so they're starting in the back chute, far in the back corner. 
and they're off. Playground. Let's go down and talk to Mr. Sigler and we're going to see what's going on in his human race and see how he's doing and, and certain battles, if you will, or races that he and Mrs. Sigler are going through and, and have our time to meet and speak with him. And, um, you know, hopefully he's doing better in the human race than, than what happened here today. Again, it isn't a tragedy, but, you know, it's just a day at the races. up here you know losing never and that's why you're successful because losing troubles you if it didn't you'd be complacent in the loser and you're far from that oh we had you in this seat in order to be Mr. a good Sigler. you want me to sit here in order yeah, to be a, seat, yeah please in order to be a good, good, you have to be a good yes you do you can't just you can't just celebrate the just joy of the we're blessed to be with one of the premier people here at all of Saratoga Race Course, in fact, all of New York Racing, and I'm gonna let him introduce himself to you. You are, sir? I'm Steve Sigler. This is the OTB Communications Network. Right now, we're gonna be joined by uh, a friend of mine and a guy I've known for a long, long time. His name is Mark DeBello. Some of you may know him, uh, and he's here to help uh, talk a little bit about uh, a project he's working on. And you're stable, Mr. Sigler? Winning Move Stable. I was always curious, Mr. Sigler, where did you get the name Winning Move? It, it's it's uh, one of those things that you, you sit down and uh, you contemplate. What name do you think that would best uh, represents your personality, your ambitions, and what would be attractive to people. It, it was maybe a 60 second contemplation. That's something that's thought of for days and days. And usually, if you can think of something quickly, then that's a winner. This is a great place to have racing. This is a great place to have television, televised racing, uh, and to have a program like this here in Saratoga. So we just want to kind of plant the seed let everybody in, in any level of the you know horse racing business, whether you're the casual fan or you know if you're a trainer, uh, jockeys, owners, uh, people in the business in television, uh, you know just be aware of this, uh, of what's coming up and, and what's going on. And uh, uh, you know, and I've spoken with some people out here, Linda Rice, Gary Contessa, Mr. Sigler of Winning Move, um, you know, are all interested in being a part of something like this. What? business are you doing now or what business did you get into or what is it that has propelled you to sit in one of these seats that have been coveted for over 150 years but where have you what was your business did it involve something with your um, and I I have to, I cannot tell a lie I have to tell the truth I know it has something to do with sports and Mr. Sigler met his, mentioned his background as a ball player and if you look at the man now how old the man are you the 67 look at the figure on this guy and I like women don't get me wrong but look at the shape this guy's in at 67 years old and if you look at a picture on his website, you will see he looks like an athlete. And when I mention your website, what website am I talking about? MSBLNational.com. And what does MSBL stand for? Men's Senior Baseball League. In 1986, I coached my boys in Little League. I hadn't played baseball since college. I played one year of softball. I, I hated it. Didn't like the feel of the ball. Didn't like anything about it. So I put an ad in Newsday, which is Long Island's largest paper. Anyone interested in playing baseball, age 30 and over, contact me. So in 1986... You just started this on your own? Correct. Just you? Just the way I'm describing it. Okay. We got enough for four teams in 1986. Fast forward to 2016. Four teams, 1986. Six. Now there are now we're looking 30 years later. 3,700 teams. 37. Over 50,000 players throughout the United States. We host wow. the world's largest tournament in Arizona, 320 teams, uh, mid-October to the early November. 330 teams in 30 separate divisions of play from different ages and different competitive divisions in every age, including father-son, which we have 49 teams, including 70 and over, which has 16 teams. By the way, I found out something about you that, uh, that uh -oh. I, could, I could ask you a, a million questions about, but okay. you play on an adult league baseball team, like fast pitch baseball? Yeah. How long have you been doing that? 
Uh, about 10 years. 10 years? Is it like an year. actor's league or is no, it some kind of... No, it's not. not no. an actor's league. Is that why? You're trying to, you try to put it down a little bit. <laughs> no! Like that. There are a couple actors on the team. It's not an actor's league. So you're in just a regular uh, league, baseball league, not yeah. softball, but baseball. No, like hardball, yeah. Hardball. What position do you play? I play third base and, uh, um, yeah, we play a team and we win sometimes, we lose sometimes. I actually ran into a couple guys today. I was at a, I was up in the valley and I was at a deli and I went in there and I was waiting for my food and some guy comes over and goes, hey, the name of my team is The Love. That's the name of our team. The Love? The Love. Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> say the, something? Say, <laughs> say, the Love. Yeah. And uh, he goes, you play on The Love. And I was kind of ordering my lunch I was, and I thought like, oh uh, yeah, I, I play on the baseball team. He said, we're on the Brooklyns, which is... Kind of a worse name than ours. Yeah, I feel well, like. no. K yeah. Kind of, yeah. kind of. <laughs> and uh, he goes, yeah, we played you guys a few weeks ago. He goes, my son's on the team. I wasn't there, but you gave us a beating, which we did. He says, uh, he says my son came home, and he goes, he pitched. And he goes, ah, we lost that one. We got killed. But I struck out Casey Affleck twice, so that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> People target you. Yeah, they right after them, yeah. That's why you should be in an all actors league. You won't get singled <laughs> out. You won't be a, you know, who no, you probably do a lot better. Just regular go groups of guys? Yeah, regular guys. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's what it. I do for a living. I, that's I what run you... the men's, own and run the men's senior baseball league. Okay. Now, with that, we have all, we see all different owners. You know some of your co-owners here. We see some that, you know, might have started with, you know, family wealth, like the Whitney's or, you know, the DuPont. No family or, wealth. Or the Mellons. No, okay. There's no family that, wealth. That, no, we know. Okay. Yeah. Um, so all this to your credit, and then we also see others who, you know, come from their, you know, business background and want to get into the sport of kings, um, you know, or they have a passion for the ponies. And then there's others who might come in as maybe a part of a syndicate, or you know, maybe they get, you know, like we have Funny Side here in New York ended up right. wanting, you know, was a right. partnership with Sacatoga. Right. Yeah, went on to win the Kentucky Derby. So you have your business, you have your, your, you know, entrepreneurial nest egg, if you will, your sm fortune, small or large. What did you do with, let's say, that fortune, or what was your dream for that, or, or how did that propel you into, or what would, might have been your passion that might have launched you into this, sort of speak, uh, or another side career, or your passion, or something that involves with the You'd be realistic, and you say, okay, I'm going to venture this much money, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim a horse, and uh, I met Gary Contessa, and I can tell you the first horse I claimed. I was in Arizona at the World Series, but of course, again, there was no way. And this is your World Series? The MSBL World okay. Series in Arizona. So I have the racing form, and I notice this horse that I, I really like, and I call Gary up, and I say, I have the money in the account, claim, I said 20,000 claim. What year would this be? I'm going to say 15 years ago, okay. in Markworth, or less, okay. or less. Okay. And he says, are you sure his room jar? R H U M J A R. Yes, Gary, yes. So the next day, Moonjar runs. He wins at 17 to 1. Wow. And I'm claiming. And and Gary, his contemporaries and, 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 are. The reason I said wow, so let me interrupt yeah. real quickly. When you have a 17 to 1 shot who's up for a claim, the owner's not expecting him to win the original owner, and they would probably put him up for a claim because they think maybe he's a plug or he's not going to win. So for you to have your claim in, that means you get him win, lose, or draw. That is correct. correct okay, right. so of if course. he wins at let's say 17 to 1, that shows you maybe had had some foresight to say, I think this horse is better than 17 to 1 correct. as an owner. Right. Um, he's going to be mine after the race, win, lose, or draw. He's no longer the previous owners. Right. They might have cashed a ticket. Did you by chance cash a Can't ticket? Can't remember, on him? but I'll tell you what happened. So we claim him for 20. I come back from Arizona. We run a, now. This is the first horse running under winning move. Three weeks later, in a 25 at at Aqueduct, and I'm all excited, and he wins. He, we, he wins again. My first <laughs> race as an owner, we win. I rush down to the the uh, paddock to the winner's circle, and Gary puts his hands on my shoulder and he says, "We lost him." And I said. What do you mean we lost him? We, we won the race. What are you talking about? You didn't know. You could also I, be claimed. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> For such a bright man. Correct. Well, that's all right. You live I, and I you learn. Because he was 17 to 1. I, of course, I was the you only figured nobody's gonna have I raise him in class. He wins again. But, you know, I rang the bell for everybody. Hey, you should have seen it when I did it. And that's happened many times. I claim, and the next time we run, 
you know, I'm the only one in, there's a five-way shake after I claim. But, you know, I think that demonstrated to Gary, I had, I had a good perception and a, a good uh, intuition. And I think claiming. it demonstrates to the other owners as That's well right. that they're willing to, and they want so to follow up you in Gary the claim box. Run, you know, he trains a public stable. He has a very good personality. Uh, he's, he's extremely congenial, and he knew a lot of people uh, that maybe wanted to partner with someone who is reputable and, and is good. Jewish guys, they're not dumb. They know to use the Italian trainers. Right, they that. own the horses and we, and we train them. Chad, um, I, my family grew up in uh, mechanic, but with Chad Brown. Now, right. he's the exception. He's from what we call Frog Island, right. which is where the few non-Italians are. Right. But anyways, but you're always kind and gracious with everybody right. we know, and you're a great trainer. One in here. Go, do, go. Okay. I hope you win your claim. Thank you. Your name is very familiar, I'm sure, to those in show business. And I don't know too many owners here that can boast, to use a lack of a better word, of, an, of a daughter who has made quite a mark in show business. Can oh, you introduce you. your daughter of to course, us? Of course, Jamie Lynn Sigler, she played Meadow on The Sopranos. Uh, she's, she's... Look at me smiling. She's, okay, yeah, you just have to see She's me involved in many other I things. Got, As a matter of fact, you know, Mr. Sigler, um, over at Winning yeah. Move, his daughter, his daughter Jamie, yeah, HBO, is right. metal soprano and is currently an entourage, so... I'm sorry if I seem rude. I'm just... I'm Jamie. I know. I'm terrible. <laughs> I love your work. <laughs> Thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about her race uh, that she's going through in this life and her race as a human and perhaps how it even relates to, you know, horses and how are they anyway therapeutic to her or your business or, or winning moves? You know, as a parent and as a grandparent, uh, you work hard. Uh, the passion of my life right now is definitely my grandchildren. Uh, I love them unconditionally. I spend as much time as I possibly can. Uh, with the four of them that live in Long Island, and I, and I love to see Bo when I, when I can. Uh, when Jamie was 17, she got diagnosed with MS, and she worked through The Sopranos on that. She, she worked at uh, Bell and, and Broadway. She, she battled it her whole life, and uh, she said she didn't want her son. She, she didn't want to hide that from her son. So she came out public, and, and she was widely acclaimed for how, how she did it. And so it's a battle she fights every day. She can't, you know, she's not going to run. And so she wants to live as normal as a life as she can. And so I'm incredibly proud of her. Uh, not, you know, of course, as a parent, you're proud of her artistic accomplishments, but much more for what she is as a, as a daughter and as a person and as a mother. I just have to interject something here, Mr. Sigler, when he mentioned his daughter, who's a beautiful woman, talented actress. You know, you hear people say something like she had to admit and came out with it. You know, it's odd how people consider something like having MS almost like it's an affliction, something you chose to have or something or some malady you have to hide. You know, everybody's born with a handicap. We all have something. Some you see, some you don't see. Mr. Sigler might even know the story of Zenyatta, who had a horse, who had some kind of a rash, I think, and when Zenyatta, uh, perhaps the greatest filly of all time was for auction. Uh, Mr. Moss got a, her for the rock bottom price of like 45000 She went on to in millions and, and virtually go undefeated and solely because too many people looked at her like she had a rash. So it's surely no fault to Jamie. Yeah, yeah, it's surely no fault to Jamie Lynn's. And, and on that note, I just have to ask you, Mr. Sigler, in relation to that. Last year, I was blessed to meet you and Mrs. Sigler here. I had a chance to talk to Mrs. Sigler. And now you had another handicap, in a sense, another challenge another race in your personal life and it doesn't get any harder than this for a father and I can only imagine it if you would just please just give us a couple of minutes to talk about well you can't you can't imagine people son. use that expression but it, it's it's not accurate uh, my, I was in Arizona with my wife and it was on a Friday and I received a distress call from his fiance to, to say that Adam was laying on the floor in their in their apartment, uh, bleeding from his ear, uh, and she had called 911, uh, and he was being rushed to the hospital.
Gary Contessa came to the hospital every single day uh, as a good friend, and, other, and his, a lot of his close friends came every single day. So it's um, it's a loss that you carry inside. Adam was special, 40, not married, 41 years old. We come home, live in the city, work in the city. We come home every single weekend and spend it with us. Huge passion for him. Racer. Love the horses, love the betting, love the stable, love to touch the horses. Love everything about it. Like I said, he never banned him on his body. If Naira had all their fans like him, there would be a hundred thousand people every every single Saturday and Sunday. He was the ultimate uh, racing fan. Uh, I just want to thank you for, uh, My for being pleasure. you. I, well, and, try not to I, hold that against me. No, I've been no, here almost all my no, life. I know that. <laughs> I, I know that. I know that. I'm not trying. Uh, and, you know, as uh, at the enthusiastic individual you've always been, you know, folks, I said I've known this guy for almost 30 years. Uh, Mark, his brother, his dad, they're somewhat responsible for uh, some of what I know or what I think I know in this game. And I'm very grateful uh, to the family, to the clan, for their friendship and their help. Wow. Mark, good luck to you. God bless you. All right. Welcome back to a day at the races. And we're coming back on our three fine, fabulous fillies. And we're in a race to get some of the Saratoga water from Poland's uh, sold and, and, and lighten their load a little bit. And I'm looking like we're missing one of the fillies has left the gate. Is she okay? Is she out yeah, and about? She's tutoring. <laughs> she's tutoring like she's being taught something or she's teaching somebody yeah, else? She's being... What's she learning? <laughs> Um, math. math. Math is good. Okay, so I figured out one minus, you know, from three is two. So we got the two young ladies left. So we just want to get a half the time report before we get a couple more waters from you. How's the race going? You're supposed to make two hundred dollars by five o'clock. It's two o'clock by my sundial, uh, even though there's no sun. And how are we doing? Oh, they're at 1.40. At what time do you think we stopped by before? Like noon, maybe? 1 o'clock? Yeah. 12.30? So in two hours, they've gotten up to 1.40. They need to get to 200 by 4 or 5 o'clock. I think they're on a pretty good pace. I think that, what do you think, though? Do you think they're winning this race? Yeah. What's your name, little filly? Kendra. Kendra? Kendra, you're the prettiest bow in the whole track. You look very beautiful with your matching mother. Is this your mom or your sister? Your mom's leaving with all the information on the horses. Is she leaving with all the money too? Did you guys win? No, we're out of here. She came for one race. Queen didn't win. The Ice Queen, her horse that she. Oh, the Ice Queen you played. He did. She didn't win. All right, but you're still a winner. That's just a beautiful way to spend a day at the races, even if it's only a half day. I gotta tell you, we're about halfway through our race today. We had our pre-race events before one o'clock, and now we're doing our events here at the races. Take a look around here. Look at our cameraman. Look at all the beautiful people here at the track today. A wide variety of people enjoying the day. We haven't even seen that much of the horses yet. Until we get to see the horses. And then we're going to get to our final day, and I've got a race to run. I mean, I'm hoping to meet Mr. Capra Rizzo here today with the Channel 10 News team, and then after that, I'm going to hopefully, prayerfully get that opportunity to get that meet and greet and photo with Rob Thomas at SPAC. I mean, oh God, what a blessing that would be. What a beautifully, spiritually blessed man. We hear that plan playing some music now. Where do you hear Rob Thomas and Counting Crows tonight, especially Rob? Oh, my God. His music truly, truly speaks. So right now, to get a little energy, and I hate to say this, but I have to be honest, this is reality. I have to get a little sugar fix. Dunkin' Donuts is a big sponsor of the track here. Uh-oh. You know what? I'm going to take a time out from the donuts. The line's not bad. And let's go see a horse over here. Look at this. we got to take a break. <laughs> Look at this horse. He looks a lot like Mickey Mouse. They got... But he, Hi, horse. You're the horse with no name? What's your name? I'm Gallo. Gallo? Why, Gallop. Gallop? Yeah. Oh, Gallo. I'm not the brightest bulb on Broadway. <laughs> Gallop, you're running a race today. Are you saying hi to all the fans? Yep. Okay, what would Gallop's race be today at the track? I mean, you're one of the, you know, you're a good-looking horse. Uh, you dress a little bit like a jockey half horse. You're like Sagittarius. You're like the centaur. He's half human, half horse. Yep. What's your uh, race today, Gallop? I'm in race track? number seven. You're in race number seven. Are you trying to win the race? You're trying to get to the race? Trying to say get your picture taken? What would be your real race today, Gallop? What would make you a winner today? I'm trying to win. 
And what, what would be a win for you? What, how do we define a victory for Gallo to gallop the horse today? Um, see as many people as they can at the track. There you go. See as many people as Gallop can at the track. You can clap your hands. It's allowed in Saratoga. Just a little bit. Not too high or they throw you out. champion horse. I never saw a red horse like that. They used to call Secretariat Big Red. I think it was undefeated at the time. The Secretariat, you know, you saw the movie Secretariat, lost his only race, I think, or his biggest race here. Big favorite, he lost to a long shot named Onion. That's why they call Saratoga the graveyard of favorites or the graveyard of champions. But you know what? Every dog has its day. It's still a great day when you're having a day at the races, win, lose, or draw. The start of the races, they sometimes didn't have enough horses to fill a race card because they're all out to battle. Just like these two guys are at battle. We got the red guy against the green guy. Not unlike the Civil War days in the Battle of Saratoga. I'm Mark Anthony DiBella, your host for Day of the Races. Look at, we're here at the top of the stretch, here at the track. This is one of the most famous spots of all the racetrack, next to probably the finish line. And you always hear the announcer say, at the top of the stretch, they're at the top of the stretch, and down the stretch they come. And this is that spot. Look at, we've got fans who came out here early for a picnic, enjoy the festivities. Beautiful people, they all got their promotional beach towels. Look, they're using them as a napkin here. Not a napkin, usually, what do you, what do you call table that cloth. thing? Tablecloth. Tablecloth. The three best looking people at the table. Look at, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Here I am, I'm the host of this little thing that we're doing. And here's, we got our fan, Seth Brooks, over somewhere. And I know it takes a lot to be a winner at the track, but sometimes you don't have to cash a ticket. Because let me tell you, the winningest guy and the luckiest guy at the track right now, it's this gentleman right here with two lovely ladies. Right. How's he doing? I don't have any. See, zero. <laughs> and he's got two. Are you, feel, are you enjoying your day at the I'm races, sir? My day. What yep. would be considered the victory for you in this day at the races for you? How would you consider yourself in the winner's circle at the end? That these two keep going walking home with me. You know? Look at that. Would that be uh -huh. maybe your lovely wife you know and your it. lovely daughter? That's it. Exactly. Look at that. Right. I, I'm not the brightest bulb on Broadway, but I, I recognize <laughs> these two lovely women didn't take too far a dip in the gene pool from this handsome man. And when you look at the racing form, you see right here the program, they list the sire, and then they list the offspring. And this man looks like a championship class sire, and he gave birth, he married, and, and joined himself. You know, horses, they mate 30 times a day sometimes. but. 
Yeah. Us humans, we'll, you know, one yeah, time, is, yeah. once is enough. No, and if you hit the right no. number, if you pick the right female, the right filly, you're, you're like a number one. That's right. You're like you're you go from you're horse in, to penguin. You date with one for life. You're in the winner, <laughs> right. And right. If, <laughs> that's and if you're a classy and successful winner like the young man, look at the offspring. <laughs> Next to her mother, she's the prettiest girl at this picnic table. Okay, I'm sorry. All the picnic oh, table. Oh, that's right. Welcome back to a day at the races. We're here at the front stretch. Came from the top of the stretch, and actually, my mother used to call me Stretch. So there you go. Again, we're gonna watch the horses. We'll listen for that reveille. It's about 10 or 11 minutes before post time when the reveille comes on and the horses come to the racetrack, and it's just a beautiful, majestic, regal scene. Oh, game time! The horses are coming to the track. Yeah. My favorite part. Okay, here we come. We gotta take a look. Can you do that again? What, the whistle? Yeah. Here in a day of the races, not everybody knows about this spot, and I hate to give it away, but you know what? All for the glory of the horse, I've got to share. But here are my friends. Here's my outrider buddy. This guy's been here. How many years have been at the track? 20 years. You hear that? He's got a ponytail just like you. You want to honor the horse with a ponytail. But this is the best spot at the track so we can see my friends. Yes, I have a little treat for you. Yes, that's right. I do have a little treat. If you give me a kiss, I will give you a treat. If you give me a kiss, fella, I give you a treat. Hold on. It's coming. Yes, siree. Yes, you like this, don't you? Yes, you do. I know you do. I know you do. It's a treat for you. Yes. Is that good? You like that? You're the good boy. All right, come on. Say hi to Mr. Stern, Gary, in the camera. Say hi to Mr. Stern. I don't know. I know. I should. I know. I should have teased you. I wasn't trying to tease you with the treat. No, I wasn't trying to tease you. I will give it to you. Don't you worry. I promise. Next time, you're just gonna give me a kiss without the treat, aren't you? All right. I got. Are you gonna be a good boy? You be a good boy. You gotta go to work soon. How are you today? They're all colts, right? All right, you're a good colt, you're a good boy? You're a good boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. Isn't that good? I love you, thank you very much. You're a good boy. You're a good boy, I kiss you every day. I bet you my tongue's longer than yours. What do you think? <laughs> I missed you with your braid. You get a treat too, you want a little treat? Hey, do you want a little treat instead? Of, you, want a, you gotta go to work, do you want a little treat? You want a little treat? Seven two three. You can have a little treat. Yes, you do. You're a big boy. Look at how big you are. You're such a big handsome boy. You're such a big handsome boy. Nice and great. Look at how handsome you are. See, he got a ponytail too. He's got two ponytails. One in front and one in back. It gives him balance. Look at you. Hi, oh, you're so handsome. You're too thick in it too. I like your orange. Hold on, amigo. Mi español es muy malo. Yeah, bueno, no, no practico. Mi estudio dos años en universidad, mi a mí. Muchos hispanos, no, no, no practico. Todos en español. Hola, señorita. Me llamo Marco Antonio. Señorita es muy linda. Más cerveza. Todos en español. No, no. Dios te bendiga. Jesucristo te amo. That's what I know. You're a good boy. You're the good boy. All right. That's it. That's it. Dos años. Hola, señorita. Yes, señorita es muy linda. Necesito una novia o esposa. Me llamo Marco Antonio. Es burro. Burro, burro. Yeah, burro, burro. He said Marco Antonio es burro. Estúpido. We're actually coming back to more of a day at the races. 
I've been coming up the last couple of years to give Mr. Caparizzo a gift that I should have given him when he interviewed me two years ago. And now I, I never met you, and I know first, that you're on now. First and I weather, i uh, got to do the radar because we got some stuff just north of here. Okay. Let me catch you in about 15 minutes. Does that work? Let me just double check. Awesome. But I'd love to talk to you. And then I, maybe I can present him the gift on the air yeah, no, and then give work. it to you. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Will that work? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. That'll I'll work. pull it out. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Narati Valente. Mr. Valente owns like oh, half the gravel around here. So he wants an owner. I said, talk to Mr. Valente. He's very charismatic, nice, friendly, and I know him. So it's a, it's a name drop issue. There's American Pharaoh, Trooper Crown winner. Hey, Chad. I just want to introduce myself again. Mark DeBello. I grew up, my father grew up, and family grew up in Mechanicville. Cool. So you're mechan I do reality TV production, different things, know a cool. bunch of the owners. But I want to congratulate you Thank on you. all your success. You're welcome. And it's my father here. He would say, you must have grew up on Frog Island, the, that side of it, because, you, you know, I, I <laughs> I'm a DeBello, and I know the, Calvec, uh, the head coach of Columbia. We, I was just there. He's Italian. Um, and... Um, you know, my family, the DeBellos, grew up there, and, yeah. and Patrick Scambatti is a friend, cousin of mine. You, but you look familiar. I've been on, like, I hold the world record for being on reality TV Jeopardy. shows. Yeah, Wheel, Wheel of Fortune. Fortune. Al Mark and I will be back uh, in just a minute. <laughs> All five prizes left. Mark Anthony, pick a letter. Well, we're all in a trance, aren't we? <laughs> Thing is our category tonight, R-S-T-L-N-E, Vanna. May we see some letters, please? That's all you're going to get. All right, uh, let's get three more consonants and a vowel. Driving up here, I was possessed to look at a license plate. On it, these letters appeared. I'm leaving it up to intervention here. OK. C-D-M-O. What? C-D-M-O. C-B, what's C -D that? C-D is in David. C-D-M-O. 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 CDMO. All right. Uh, we should pass a couple more cars. All right. You, uh, thing. Talk it out, Mark. You have 10 seconds. Shh. Good luck. Jade? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. And I'm joking. Pulled my arm right out of its socket. The Range Rover. Got the Range Rover. Fifty two thousand three hundred. Vanna, Mark's coming. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. Oh, I know Tony. Oh, I know Tony. Yeah, we're like cousins, I think, or something. How do you know Tony? I graduated with him. And I remember him saying, ah, oh, my cousin or whatever is a wheel of fortune or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did a, he was, um, he did. He drove for the film that was in town, but he, yeah. He's, but we have a lot. All our family from my father's side is from Macampa. We were so. Every so. Tony's mom and Pat's and Batty's mom are sisters. They're my family, so and you Rock know them better Stan than I do. Right, brought and Pat. Now, how, but you all know. You just know them from growing up in Macampa. I graduated oh. with Anthony. How did you get into training out of Macampa? You're kidding. Yeah, one of your TV we are. We got time. We're doing something for Animal training. Planet. We're going to have you talk to us. It's crazy. No, we need to have it like, like reality no, TV. No. We're, well, first of all, we're going to do it for real. We, this okay. is a pilot for Animal Planet. I've got 10 distributors from TVG to Roberts who does the signal. Everybody okay. interested. And like I said, you're Mechanicville's favorite son, to, honestly. And your success here is and in training is unbelievable. So let me ask you, Chad uh, Brown, who's the number one. Are you number one still right now? Or are you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just number one. Chad, we have many family in common because my father and family grew up in Mechanicville, New York, which is typically Italian. So Brown is not Italian. What's your heritage, Chad? Well, everything. I do have some Italian, though. It does have some Italian. Okay. One and my you... grandma, my grandma, one of my grandmothers is Italian. Okay. Now, Chad, we're, our show is called The Day at the Races because the, ho the horses are the stars of the show, but there's also the human race. And Chad was just sharing, me, sharing with me, and again, real quick. Chad, you got your start in training how and where, which you just told me. I just walked in the track with my parents when I was young, and um, I just fell in love with the horses. And uh, I spent my whole life trying to figure out, you know, a way to get in this business and be successful in this business. And just met the right people, worked my way up, learned the trade, training horses, and here I am. And you're doing—you're obviously one of the top trainers in the nation, if not just here. 
in your day at the races here, did you have a successful day? Did you have a winning day? You're I, walk- had, I won two races today, so we did well. Oh, congratulations. Now, in closing, the run. Yeah. in closing, what would be your a winner's circle for you, Chad, after a day at the races here? I mean, what would be your, you know, for Chad Brown to win his own human race, what would that be? I go home to my family, my wife and my two kids, and enjoy the evening, and win or lose, and those two little girls of mine run up to me. I'm a winner every day when I go home. Perfect. That's the right answer. That's a Jeopardy answer. Thank you, Chad. God bless. Tell everybody I said hello. You've tried to catch our buddy Steve Caparizzo now the last two summers, correct? Yes, Tim. Uh, thank you for having me on again. A couple years ago, I was in from out of town. I grew up in this area, however, yep. um, and my name is Mark Anthony DeBello, markanthonydebello.com. And Mr. Yep, Caparizzo yep. had recognized me from a bunch of reality shows yep. that I did. And so we had a nice conversation like I'm speaking with you now. And, and you had something last year. Cap wasn't here. Probably was filling in for him. And... Well, guess what? He's off again today. <laughs> well, you know what? That's We're happy to have you. I'm sure the area is. And, and, you know, no disrespect, but I don't like to be the second best looking guy in any picture. Yeah, and you're, yeah whatever on that one. <laughs> okay. Well, you're a handsome man. I'm sure you do a great job. But I felt bad because I had said to Mr. Caparizzo, and being lighthearted, I yep. said he reminded me of somebody who's sort of famous. And that's mm-hmm. kind of in its own way a little bit insulting yep, and offensive. Yep, yep. Yeah, and he's a good looking, nice, talented of guy. Course. So I always felt bad about it. So I had gotten him a gift and I wanted to present it to him last year mm-hmm. and correct myself and apologize on camera. But again, we have you here this year and he's not up here again. I'm splitting out of town on Saturday. So yep. if I may, I, on behalf of yourself and to Mr. Caparizzo and, and the station, I'd like to give you the gift to forward to awesome. him. Why, but, thank you much. Okay, this is for you. This okay. is just the Naira calendar from this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you're you. welcome it'll, to it'll thank you. Okay, and now do you, Mr. Mr. Caparizzo, please accept my apology for referencing you as looking like somebody else. You're a good looking, nice man in your own right. <laughs> but now I don't want to sound hypocritical or goofy or redundant, but, but I want to give you a gift you have the butt, of who you really remind me of. Okay. So here's the gift for you and who you really remind me of. And you I'm know, off. you know the weather, you know when it's going to yep. rain and you love animals and do a lot of charity work with animals. So you remind me of Noah, of Noah and the Ark. So there's a gift for you, Mr. Caparizzo. You know Keep up the good work with the critters and telling everybody when it's going to rain. God bless you. I, I love you. Thank this, you. I don't think this t- uh, tie will key out, which will be great, knowing TV. Well, the wind will I'm not up. the brightest bulb on Broadway. I don't even know what key out means. But thank you, Tim. Thank you, well, Mr. Drawbridge. Thank you, Channel 10. Thank, thank you, Mr. Caparizzo. Thank you very much. We'll thank jump you, Tim. into the first forecast. Appreciate it. They're at the wire. I want to say a, a one final thing, because Sportive Kings is driven a lot by the owners, and a successful owner is, is not one that you look in the program and see who has the most wins. A successful owner is one who can integrate his passion, get his family to have a similar passion and and a day at the races with your family rooting for your horse win or lose there's not a day better the race for the girls today was to make the 200 or 300 dollars benchmark the 200 finish line by five o'clock we've got about 10 minutes to go so we're going to call it race early and we're going to find out from miss caroline how y'all did today <laughs> Miss Caroline, what was your grand total today? I'm um, 244. Oh! Wait, 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 200 or 300? 244. And what did we say, 200? 200. So here I am trying to get this will call, see if I'm on here. And trying to get this two-year objective complete, this two-year race, and God bless. And not be late. Let's still get something done. You all set? Terrific, thanks. Now I think I need, do I need tickets? Um, Can you double check? Hi hey champ, I need one one lawn ticket. Okay, so I got my ticket. What a loser I am. Look at that. Now the bugle's broke. Yes! Are you Jessica? I am. Oh god bless you. Nice to meet you. I left I left my camera guy hanging my partner right-hand right. man assistant I was panicked about the parking and we were at Saratoga filming all day and oh, yeah. 
as I kind of said, just circle around. And it's nice to meet you. Thank you. She was backstage at Las Vegas. Right. You were down with your lovely wife, and I hope she's doing well. I know she is. Good. You were backstage when Raven walked the dogs, and you came down to Vegas in the Palms, and you were there were a bunch of people, and you could have been more genuine and lovely. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, awesome. But, but for me, for, yeah, because, you know, performers don't have to be that way. And you took pictures with everybody. Now, the woman who snapped the picture with you and I, I would have cherished for the last two years, except she never sent it to me. Oh, my goodness. And that's okay. So that's why Jessica and Jason are so your phone, very just make sure, I don't trust her either. What? It's, it's actually not your phone. So that's the funny part again. <laughs> but that evening, even before then, I had just been released from the hospital because I had a heart thing. And I said, you know what? If I had one day left in life, or one day to start my life, where would I want to be? And I just ran from your show, and you know how you open your end. Like, it's a oneness thing that we're doing here. So, you know, if I follow your lead, and you kind of bring us all together. At the onset. Is are you guys ready to celebrate life with us tonight in Vegas here in the club? Are you ready to celebrate life with us tonight in Las Vegas? And I just want to tell you, I never had music lift my spirits that way. So I wanted to thank you. No, I mean, God bless you. And I said, God, it's a God, listen. Rob, I've been around. Do you live out here now? Yeah. Well, I grew up in upstate New York, Albany. Okay. Um, so I go to the races. We did a little film thing. We're doing something for Animal Planet. I know you love the animals. We so. do, yeah. Our foundation. So this is for you, a little gift. I had another gift, Sidewalk Angels. Yeah. But to answer, oh, your, sweet. <laughs> but to answer your question, I give that to a lot of people in sports that I meet show business because I do a lot of reality TV stuff. So having said that, I'm based in Vegas right now. And but grew up here, so I had to come back to the Saratoga thing. And it was so divine providence that you were here. Oh, it's because awesome. a lot of stuff happened at the track that was positive. Now you know Jason, I do, right? I, I then, after I had met you, I wrote a long story about my heart condition and just positive about you. And I just said, people need to know the power of music, the universal language, and Rob Thomas, you know, a master of You're on Twitter, right? I'm on everywhere. Because I've seen you develop, I've seen your name. Mark Anthony, yeah, I'm kind of yeah. everywhere. Um, but I went to post the article everywhere, distrib distribute everywhere, but it didn't make sense, Rob, without the picture, because sort of the end all was to get th that surprise improvisational moment right. with the picture with you was just a blessing beyond belief. Wow. And, and, and so the whole story, I said, maybe people will improve, because you're a spiritual man, I'm a very spiritual man, I said, maybe they'll just, you know, appreciate this story. So when the woman, the photographer there, didn't send the picture, I'm like, okay, I'm on this two-year quest to get back to Rob Pogs, oh, just to get this moment, and just to thank you personally. Now, just without, on the sidebar, I had tickets to your show a year ago or so in Vegas, I think at Mandalay, yeah. maybe you with the band. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think it was a Matchbox tour now. Okay, right. So, and I was actually talking to a client who wanted to sign with me for, for you know, doing reality TV and this and that. And People thought I was scalping your ticket. I think it was Google Dolls. Yeah. I my assistant's got the tickets in the yeah. car, unused. I'm like, I waited a year to see this man. I'm not scalping any <laughs> ticket. So nothing ever came of it, but I didn't get to go to the show. Oh my goodness. So I'm like, that's okay, God willing, I'll Jeez, have another. We, we gotta give you a good show tonight. It's Listen, be... it was this is the honor for me. I mean I appreciate you and and, and I just like I said, you were just uplifting spiritually and I We gotta get Seth to plug in at eight o'clock so he can report to his parole officer so they know where he is and if, if the GPS runs out of juice they're gonna think he's you know swimming in the ocean to Mexico so <laughs> so you know he's been you know he asked to ask permission I mean listen it's better than being in the who scout he's earned his freedom he did his time paid his debt so to speak to society he's been you know he's ten times I knew him before he went in he was still a great guy and now he's even a more magnificent man you know, so I happen to know him from before, and, and I can vouch for him, and, and he said, you know, he talked to the parole person and said, go for it, you know, do some work, be positive, go enjoy your day at the races. And we want to give to you a special gift. We know we have cups and trophies and plates that go to horses after a race, um, but we want to give this to you because for as far as I'm concerned, if you just do us the honor of opening this, we want to present you this cup as a winning Thank owner you, and Great. a winner in life and a winner at the day at the races. Thank and so to much. us, you're very welcome. And to us, nice. you are number one. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sigler. You're Thank welcome. you very much you're for welcome. your time. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's show Mr. Sigler his cup. He's like number it. one in our book. Thank you. He is number I one. I it's good enough. Done. We got you. Thank you, Mr. Sigler. Mr. Sigler, you. let's get you out of here. Thank you. Nice meeting you, sir. Do it again. What was your total? 
244. So we got a winner. The girls win the race today. So congratulations on meeting your expectation and your goal and winning a day at the race. So we're going to buy two more from me to put you to 246 total for the day. So we know you're a winner. And we'd also like to present to you when the horses win the race, they get their plate, a cup, or a trophy. So we'd like to present this trophy to you today. And thank you for your time with us today. I want to thank congratulate you. you. You're very welcome on winning your race today. You're all three winning fillies here today on a day at the races. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to send gifts to everybody. I had this gift to give you also, but we broke it. I broke it at the racetrack because we were giving it to the bugler and the people who make music. And I said, Rob Thomas is a better person to give this gift to. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the only problem is I we do nicer gifts usually, but I broke it. So, again, I just sincerely apologize. Any gift is unnecessary. words are really uh, Well, I'm going to give, try to get the story out and pass it to Jason, you know, for his approval and whatnot, see what he wants to do with it. I'll just get it to him. But again, if there's any way, I, and I always told you this and, and anybody on your team, if I can serve you in any way, I know you're not a reality TV guy per se, but with your work with the animals and your lovely family, and like I said, just to, you know, like, you just, you really, you're a blessed man. Okay, Seth, talk to us. Well, I just got a text back, uh, said okay, so he knows what I'm doing, knows where I'm at. And then uh, I just replied back to him saying thank you very much and uh, letting him know what I'm doing from here. So he knows what I got going on and I should be back at the original time that I told him or asked for it to be out uh, for 10 to 11 o'clock and I should be back home by 11. I told him I'll text him when I get uh, back home and I'm in my house and uh, go from there. But did you make your 8 o'clock curfew even though you were late? Did you... If do they acknowledge that you're okay with that? Yeah, he uh, he said okay to uh, pretty much knowing that uh, you know I that I, so I told him that I'm charging from 8:20 to 9:20, so I'm getting my hour in. He knows that I'm 20 minutes late because I told him 8:20. So you know I was just upfront and honest with him, told him when I you know what I'm doing and what's going on, and uh, you know he gave it the uh, thumbs up and the uh, a okay. So. Well, I would say it's Seth Brooks won his race. <laughs> Amen. The stewards. <laughs> The stewards have come back with a decision. Our fan winner today is Mr. Seth Brooks. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Photo finish. Even my hands start shaking Hearing your voice, I'm overjoyed I'm sorry, but I have no choice You're only getting better Maybe you have your reasons Maybe you're scared you'll be let down There's no one around Well then maybe Maybe if you hold me Baby Let me come over I will tell you Secrets Nobody knows I cannot overstate it I will be overjoyed That smile on your like summer The way that your hand keeps touching mine Let me be the one to make it right And maybe, maybe let me hold you Baby, let me come over I will tell you Tell you 
secrets God only knows I cannot over 